We can look at sound waves on a device called an oscilloscope. This displays the waves as a transverse wave. There's two th features of the wave, the height of the wave, which is its amplitude, and how many waves there are in a specific time, which is called a frequency. So if it's not very tall from the middle to the top, it's got a low amplitude, and this means it's a quiet sound. And if there aren't many waves, here there are only two complete waves, then it has a low frequency. It doesn't have many waves per second. And the second one, it might be still quiet, the same height, but it's twice as many waves, and therefore it's a higher frequency. In fact, it's twice the frequency. And for the third one here, you can see we've increased the amplitude, the size of it, so it's a much louder sound, but it's the same frequency as number one, quite low. And then number four shows you what would happen if we increased the amplitude and the frequency. We'd get a very loud and high frequency sound, high pitched sound. This slide's going to show you how sound travels, but first of all, just remember that how sounds are formed. They're formed when something vibrates, because sound waves are, in fact, just vibrations in the air. The fact you need to learn is that humans can hear frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So if you've got something to vibrate, for example, an uh, electric guitar, um, pluck the strings, produce a sound, and this makes the air vibrate around it, and here's a model of what the air molecules look like. So if you focus on one of the black dots, you'll see that they're not moving from left to right, which at first appear to be. They are, in fact, vibrating about a central point. And it does appear that things are moving from left to right, but it's actually just the vibration being passed on as a sound wave. Um, and this is how sound travels through air. Sound must have something to vibrate, so it cannot travel through a vacuum. And its sound actually travels better through solids and liquids than through air because the molecules are closer together. So when the vibration gets to the end to the ear, it makes the eardrum vibrate, and we we'll, won't go into the biology of it, but that eventually sends a signal to the brain. Okay, if you go beyond what humans can hear, beyond 20,000 hertz, then you get into a region called ultrasound. And ultrasound has a few uses, basically on the same concepts. We we'll start with prenatal scanning, which is probably the most popular exam question. And I'll talk about scanning in the next slide. Um, cleaning, where the very high frequency vibrations will be used to dislodge the dirt, to make the dirt vibrate and fall off and also detecting flaws and cracks, and also medical treatment. If we concentrate on the scanning, the prenatal scanning, or the detecting cracks, this is the principle. If you send ultrasound through a solid, goes quite well through a solid, it will reflect off different surfaces by different amounts. And by doing this and looking at it and analyzing where it's reflected, you can develop a picture of what's on the inside. So for example, if it's an unborn baby, in the womb, then you can send ultrasound quite safely, bounce off the baby's body, and you can get a clear picture of how the baby, baby's lying and the features of the baby.